categorically, you said, we do not, we do not go to priests and ask them about their parishioners. You said, we do not. You didn't say, we haven't. You didn't say, we won't. You said, we don't. As it turns out, you do. And you kept it from the public. You deliberately misled Congress about it. And the only reason we know about it is because a whistleblower came forward. I just you something. haven't done a darn thing. You haven't fired anybody. In fact, what the House found is, what is it? You, you admonished them. They were admonished. And their respective supervisors were told to engage with the Human Resources Division to ensure that deficiencies are addressed. Oh, well, I feel much better. Now, the FBI uses all tools available at its disposal to combat domestic terrorism, which now apparently includes the crime of being Catholic. Let's talk a little bit about the FBI's egregious targeting of Catholic Americans. You have repeatedly been asked about the memo gener generated by the Richmond field office we now know in collaboration with multiple other field offices about recruiting sources in Catholic churches, you have repeatedly said that no human sources were approached. This is you on July the 12th in the House. You were asked directly by Jim Jordan, do you think that priests ought to be approached to give information on parishioners? You said, no, sir, no, sir. You went on to say, we do not recruit, open, or operate human sources. We do not report on religious organizations. You went on to say, this product, meaning the Richmond memo, has not resulted in any investigative action. But now we know that in fact, FBI agents did approach a priest and a choir director to ask them to inform on parishioners. So were you lied to when you gave this testimony or were you lying to Congress? Neither. So the, you are, your question conflates two different things. Uh, there's the intelligence product itself, uh, which the Richmond field office created. It was written by, as our inspection found, by analysts in Richmond, reviewed by people in Richmond, and captioned Richmond field office product. Separately from that, there was an investigation of a specific individual who was amassing Molotov cocktails and posting about killing people. And it does not surprise me that there were people who knew that subject in that investigation, that is the guy building the Molotov cocktails and trying to kill people, The people talked to the witnesses who knew that person. And I think the product, the Richmond intelligence product, which cites that investigation, is actually pretty transparent about exactly what I just said. No, I, no, I don't think so at all. In fact, a whistle, the only reason we know this is a whistleblower has come forward and told the House under oath that the FBI went and interviewed priests and choir directors in the Richmond area. The, the House goes on to say that the FBI has repeatedly refused to disclose this information. The only reason we know it is because a whistleblower came forward with it. Just like the only reason we know about this memo is because a whistleblower came forward with it. How many other parishes around the country have priests or choir directors been approached? By the way, are, are Catholic choirs now, are, are, they, are they breeding grounds for domestic terrorism? Is this, is this your latest theory? How many other parishes have FBI agents approached priests and choir directors to ask about parishioners? Look, Senator, we do not and will not conduct investigations based on anybody's exercise of their constitutionally You have religion. done so, and your memo sure. explicitly asks for it. Those your memo labels traditional Catholics as racially and ethnically motivated violent extremists in need of investigation. You have a list of churches, a list in the memo. You've repeatedly said we don't target churches, we don't list churches. They're listed in the memo. So how many other parishes have you gone to to talk to choir directors, for heaven's sake? As I've said, know the answer to that question. <laughs> no, I don't know the answer to that question. But I can tell you that we don't investigate people for their exercise of their constantly protected, constitutionally protected religious expression. I, I that particular can't... intelligent product is something that as soon as I saw it, I was aghast. I had it withdrawn. Really, you were aghast. I and, was. Oh, uh, really? Yes, and what sir. have you done about it? Did you fire the people who wrote it? No, I had it withdrawn. Have you fired anybody involved in it? Senator, if you will give me a chance to answer That's a your yes question. or a no. It's not hard. Have you fired anyone involved in the writing of that outrageous memo, about which, frankly, you've repeatedly misled the public? Yes or no? The individuals involved have in that product Have you fired anyone? Not, just a minute. Were not found to have engaged in any intentional or bad faith conduct. And in fact, in fact, Senator, 
a number of the individuals the involved, no. a number of the individuals involved in writing that product in the Richmond office were themselves Catholic. So the notion oh, I see. that so they were targeting they, their own oh, faith is Oh, so they have to get out of jail free card. I see. I they, see. So you're immune and they're that. immune. So we shouldn't ask questions about it. You haven't done a darn thing. You haven't fired anybody. In fact, what the House found is, what is it? You, you admonished them. They were admonished. And their respective supervisors were told to engage with the Human Resources Division to ensure the deficiencies are addressed. Oh, well, I feel much better. They've been sent to bed without food. Good heavens, Director. This is one of the most outrageous targetings. You have mobilized your division, the most powerful law enforcement division in the world, against traditionalist Catholics, whatever the heck that means. And you're just told us you, you have not fired a single person. I mean, here, it gets worse. Your Richmond field office, they thought there was nothing wrong with this. The House interviewed the head of the Richmond field office. He testified. It's all here in the public report. I refer you to it, pages 12, 13, 14. He testified he saw no problem with this. He said he thought it was fine. In fact, we have internal memoranda of the members of the field office high-fiving. One peer reviewer, another member of the field office wrote, I think this is a great product. I really enjoyed the read. Do you have a problem with systemic bigotry against Catholics in the FBI? No. What are you going to do about this? Are you going to fire these people or not? Those individuals have all been admonished, and it is all going Honest. into their— If you would let me finish my answer, it is all going into their annual performance reviews, which oh. has direct impact <laughs> on their compensation, among other things. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see. So the 60 million American Catholics who we now, who now learn— that your FBI has recommended that priests be recruiters and informants. Your FBI has gone to priests, choir directors, but we're to feel better because you've admonished them for their wrongdoing. You, again, are conflating two different no, things. I'm not. When I am we taking are... your testimony where you said you do not. You said categorically, categorically, you said we do not. We do not go to priests and ask them about their parishioners. You said we do not. You didn't say we haven't. You didn't say we won't. You said we don't. As it turns out, you do. And you kept it from the public. You deliberately misled Congress about it. And the only reason we know about it is because a whistleblower came forward. I just That's fundamentally disagree with your characterization. Well, there's no characterization. The facts are the facts. And I fundamentally resent the fact that you have violated, if not the spirit, if not the letter, certainly the spirit of the First Amendment and use your law enforcement agency against Catholics in this nation. Let me ask you about one other thing. Last time you were here, Sorry. you had to leave early to take a jet to your vacation in the Adirondacks. Now, let me just ask you this. A whistleblower tells us that you also maintain a home in Atlanta to which you fly on a regular basis. I'm told by this whistleblower from the FBI that you use the FBI jet to make that travel. Is that correct? All of my travel, personal or work-related, is required to be done on FBI planes. That is long-standing policy. It goes back e well over a decade. I'll take that as a yes. The whistleblower also says that you regularly require the jet, which is based in Manassas, to be flown to D.C. because, and I quote now, Ray doesn't like to sit in traffic. Is that accurate? No, that's not accurate. He also says that you pay only the lowest-cost commercial ticket for that Atlanta to D.C. trip, which is, I don't know, what, 200 bucks or something, when, of course, it costs 20, 30,000 to operate the jet. Is that correct? The, the reimbursement that I provide is reimbursement that is set by OMB, OMB policy, and I follow that policy, which goes back over a decade and I think has been chronicled in a GSA report from back in, like, 2013. You all provide all issues. the records to this committee of your travel and relevant use. I'll provide FBI whatever jet. information is appropriate, absolutely. But, uh, well, appropriate. I mean, everything that we ask for? I, I, we will follow up with you about providing information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Butler.